What's going on guys? So phase one of Apple Intelligence is here and it gives us access to this new Siri animation with also live captions on top. I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you 25 useful features that nobody's talking about that Apple skipped out during your keynote that this new Apple Intelligence can do. So starting off with compatible devices. It's currently only the iPhone 15 Pro Max to iPhone 15 Pro, the iPad Pro with M1 or newer. This also includes the iPad Air with the M1, the MacBook Air M1, and all the other Mac lineups with an M1 or, or greater are compatible to take advantage of this new Apple intelligence. And then of course, in the fall time with the launch of the iPhone 16, this will also become compatible on those devices as well. And now currently, this is just a developer beta as we are on developer beta 18.1 but the full version should be available around september fall time area so with that said let's talk about it so the new ui is not only available on our mobile devices but also is compatible on carplay and unfortunately this isn't siri 2.0 as of yet but this is a smarter siri than we had in the past for this phase one update and it will easily continue to get smarter because one of the new features about this Siri is that you could continually ask it questions. So if I will say, how's the weather looking like in Seattle? It's currently cloudy and 83 degrees in Seattle, Washington. What about New York? The National Weather Service has issued an air quality alert until tomorrow. It's currently cloudy and 89 degrees in New York, New York. How about Shanghai? It's currently clear and 87 degrees in Shanghai, China. The air quality is considered lightly... So I think we get the point. You could continuously just continue asking Siri questions. Let me lower the brightness real quick. I think it's a little bit too high. So in case you missed it, not only did we get a new animation, but there's also this feedback button that's going to illuminate right here on the bottom right right here. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Ah, you missed it. But there was an icon right here, which is basically direct feedback. So if you'd like to request Siri to do a different task or you found some bugs, you could always share that feedback with Apple. Now for the captions on top, if you don't see this enabled on yours, it was enabled by default for me, but I've noticed some people in the comment section were telling me it's not. You can find this in the Apple intelligence section right here in your settings. In the Siri response section, this is where you can enable always show requests. So by having that enabled, the text will go up on top. And in addition to that, aside from the text showing up on top, if you like to just type something to tell, ask Siri like a question, you can always tap down here and this will bring you a little keyboard to ask Siri anything. So like, how's it going? I don't know why you don't want to understand that. That's interesting. So if you don't verbally want to communicate with Siri, you have this option right here. And then if you ever receive like group text messages or notifications from like a third party app or there's a third party app giving you notifications, there is now summary because right here on our lock screen, there's a group message going on and this downward facing arrow summarizes everything. So this, so it's summarizing everything, deciding on food for dinner, because if we click on that notification, everything correlates to that. So instead of reading this entire stack, AI will basically summarize it all right here. Again, it also works with third party apps as well. Now the next group of features can be located in its writing tools. If we use something like the Messenger app, a Notes app, any app that allows you to make a body of text, you'll have access to writing tools. So let's say for instance, this is something I had ChatGPT type up for me, but with some grammar errors. By selecting the whole subject and you hit this little write arrow, there's now a new writing tool section. And on top of here, you have the five writing tools that benefits your writing and on the bottom here can be used for your own personal preference but also summarizing like articles that you see online, key points in certain directions, list, or you could even create a table. But by hitting proofread, this will go over everything and make it more readable for others. So right here you can see the corrections and if you hit the down arrows, it will give you feedback why it replaced that word with this other word instead. And you have the freedom to overwrite it too if you feel like the AI was incorrect with your style of writing. You can always reverse back to the original. So you can either reverse it all or just leave it as is. And when you leave it as is and you decide selecting it all again, you may also see this new AI tool right here on the very bottom where this is AI suggesting to proofread, rewrite, or click on that to open up your writing tool as well instead of having to select it all. So if you like to have AI rewrite it all entirely, you can always just tap rewrite. It'll make it nicer and more readable than ever. 
or if you like to change the tone, you do have friendly, which if we read loudly, it just says to find your water heater, you usually find it in the basement or utility room. First, turn off the gas valve. It's basically, this is the instruction guide on how to turn on the pilots in case your water heater is acting up. But if you like to reword it to sound more professional, if you're sending this to a client, now it says to locate your water heater, you will typically find it in the basement or utility room prior to access the unit. To ensure that the gas valve is turned off, yeah, it basically just makes it sound like my dad sent this to me. But let's say for example, this was an online article. You just wanna know the key points. You can always tap summary and it'll summarize everything in less writing right down below here. You can either copy it, replace the written text or share it with email, messenger, or just paste it somewhere else. And you can also share the feedback down here. But if we go back, you can also do key points and it will give us the key points right down here. Although it's very limited, again, this is just a beta. And then list basically will list everything out automatically for you. So it's easier to follow. And then table, it could also make everything into a table Excel sheet format to give you steps, instructions. It does a really good job actually, I'm quite surprised. But this is mostly useful if you actually use like articles, like you're reading an article online, like if we go to 95 Mac as an example, and we select on an article like right here. It may be buggy because we are after all still in the developer beta. If you hit the summarize or this little reader tab section right here on Safari, show in a reader format. There's an AI summary ability right here as well. They could tap, wait for it. And it summarized everything in this long article into this simple paragraph right here for us. And just like I showed you before, if you select this and go into writing tool, you can select the entire paragraph. And if you go down, you can summarize even more or select key points. Unfortunately, it's not available for this article, unfortunately. Sometimes it does work though. It's still, again, it's in a beta stage. So you'll able to list the key points right here for us from that summary. Just showing you an example of how to utilize that to its full potential. Then as for the mail, the mail application on our iPhone also received this cool update. When you select this, all the emails you have here are all gonna be summarized using AI. As I was showing you earlier about the home notification, there's this like arrow downward pointing icon summarizing the summary of that email. So if you have like an unnecessary long email saying, hey, so-so, hey, blah, 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 how are you doing? And then it gets to the information that's important. AI will scan that email and show, you, show it to you right away so you don't have to actually like read through everything. And then if you receive a daily email that's important, AI will scan that. If it's like an important like signature that's required, just to give you an example, you'll have a priority section on top, but since we don't have anything marked up priority, we don't see that here, but it would look like this. Now getting out of here, Apple is really transparent when it comes to its AI ability, because if you go into your iPhone settings and let's go back to our main setting menu right here and you go into privacy and security. And if you scroll down, you'll see an Apple intelligent report by tapping on here, verifying with face ID, you can select the last 15 minutes, seven days of your report you like to export. And we hit export activities. You can either text it yourself, save as PDF or forward it to a third party app. In our case, I'm going to use Apple notes, hit save and launch our note app. Here's our Apple report right here because it's hundred percent transparent on where your data is going. It even keeps track of your previously asked questions as well. So this allows you to track if it's going through Apple server itself, a third party or your main device. So the codex of everything is right here. Well, not codex, but the report, you know what I mean. But if you ever have a question about Siri, like to do something on your phone, now whenever you ask questions like, how do I turn on dark mode? To turn on dark mode on your iPhone. First, open control center. Second, touch and hold the brightness button. And third, tap the appearance button to turn dark mode on or off. It now will guide you to the instructions where previously if you would ask Siri something like that, what would normally happen, it would just give you like a link to a website article. How do I turn on dark mode? Or it'll give you the actual like switch right there. I don't know which is better, but now you could genuinely just ask any questions you're trying to do on your device. 
Then as for messages, whenever you reply to a message, now you have these purple animation for AI suggestions from Apple Intelligence. So sometimes does like simple replies like yes or no, automatically know the situation and allow you to quickly just reply immediately without manually typing it in. It's a pro and a con. If it's for simple questions like this, this is awesome. But for complex stuff, I will stay away from AI, of course. Whenever it's a stack message from one person, it will use AI to also summarize it as well. The next Apple Intelligent feature can be located in your photo app because now we have a new memory section where you can use AI to create anything by utilizing your videos and photos. So if I type in something like snow and cars, using my entire photo library, it's gonna scan through everything and create what I just asked it to create. So here's my snow and truck adventures, I guess. Yeah, I like driving this thing in the snow a lot. It's really fun. And it just created this video memory of like all my wacky adventures. That was like eight inches of snow I was plowing through, by the way. <laughs> Good times, good times. And there's the big hoss right there. All right, enough of my truck. Another cool thing you could do is now whenever you type in like, like dogs and you select on the video, this whole section is highlighted blue because the whole video is a dog. But if it's a clip like this, notice how the dark blue is telling us where to go. We like to see dogs even though there's, oh yeah, there's a dog right there. Wow, that's actually pretty advanced. That dog is very small. But throughout the entire video, like no dog, no dog, no dog, but it highlights it in blue when you'll see a dog in the video. That's a new AI ability as well. Now, by looking into Control Center, we did get a new focus mode and it's right here. Reduce interruption utilizing Apple Intelligence because it does have the Apple Intelligent logo. If you activate it, what it basically does is, just like every focus mode, of course, it shows you the focus icon right here, which mode you're in. But with Intelligent Focus enabled, all your non-important notifications like junk mail, in-game purchases or promotions and stuff like that, just the nonsense, they will not interrupt you. However, if you receive an important notification like movement at the front door with your ring bell notification, security alarm has gone off, your car alarm was triggered, or your friend or family member texts you with an emergency subject in the notification text, if it's urgent, it will still pop up in your notification. Like this one has the subject emergency pick up. So it will bypass it and will illuminate. It will even illuminate purple as you saw earlier, because if we look back here, it's highlighting it as a priority message, which is quite neat. And I really do enjoy this new focus feature. You can locate it, of course, in the focus setting, which I'm already in, but settings on your main phone, go and focus. And here you'll see that new reduce interruption ability. And as you saw earlier, we had Marky Mark over here messaging us, but he's not a part of people that's allowed to bypass this. Same goes for apps too. We do have priority for apps as well as contacts, but I found out that the Apple intelligence alone is really good and I really do enjoy it. You can also choose custom wallpapers too for your Apple Watch or your iPhone's layout, as well as create a schedule. Pretty advanced stuff. I like this AI reduce interruption of feature. And then with all this, we also have the ability to use AI to do phone call recording. And it's really interesting. So during a phone call, you have the option to record the phone call and it'll start like a three second timer, letting the other caller know that this line will be re getting recorded and all consents are like exposed. Like this is a recorded line. So it's recording the audio. So whenever you record something, so once that phone call is done, it saved it in our notes app. So now if we actually go into our notes app as an example, you'll see the section was made right here, but if you go into your folders, there's now is a new call recording section as well, a little album that got created. And when you click on here, and then if you see here, you can either replay the clip entirely, but by selecting it, there's a transcript version of the phone call right here as well, which will do the local caller, which is us, and then the contact person that we we're talking to. It will label the person right here whenever there's like a different like talk narrative points. So if I'm talking, it'll say me. If Mark was talking, it'll be Mark. So actually like identify who said what, which is quite interesting. But aside from that, there you guys have it. That is everything new for Apple Intelligent phase one that we got over this week. Make sure to stick around because I do plan on making continuous updates to this AI ability for phase two and et cetera. Thank you guys so much for watching.